In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an ISOBUS implement. We connect to the implement and we plug it in. And what should happen is the implement should be auto-detected and it should download an operating mask. Once that implement is successfully connected to the tractor, we navigate to our Vario Guide, Vario Guide main menu, Implement Selection. You'll notice down here now, underneath the tractor, where normally we can select our implements that we have saved, we have a gray box that shows fertilizer spreader. That is what your ISOBUS implement should do. The implement should take over the implement selection box and self-populate all the information that it has stored in the implement's ECU. The only thing that you should be able to adjust is if we navigate down here to our implement settings page, we can change this value right here, which is our hitch length. It always populates this as zero, but for this implement to properly work, you have to measure this. So in this case, being a fertilizer spreader, we would measure from our three-point hitch balls back to where the fertilizer is hitting the ground. If it was a manure spreader, we would do the same thing and we'd measure from our hitch pin back to where the manure hits the ground. If it was a sprayer, we measure from our hitch pin back to the spray boom. And we input that value in here. I'll assume that this is 30 feet back from the tractor as to where the fertilizer actually hits the ground. You also have the ability to adjust your center distance. If your implement is offset one way or the other behind the tractor, you can change this value. The system will default it to half of the working width, which then would be accurate for a typical implement that pulls straight behind the tractor. Up here we have the ability here to change what type of hitch this particular unit is. This one's defaulted to the correct hitch, which is a three-point hitch mounted unit. But if that's not what it was, you can change it here in this menu to something different. If we changed it to draw bar and we enable that, we have some additional things here that we need to look after. Right underneath our draw bar is our axle type. It defaults to steered axle. But if the unit does not have a steered axle on it, you need to make sure that you change this to a rigid axle. Down here we have two values. We have our navigation point. So we need to measure from our hitch pin back to whatever part of the implement that we want to have steered online. So if this is a towed implement that has wheels, for example, like a towed uh, sprayer that has tires, we'll measure from the hitch pin back to those tires. If it was a manure spreader, so let's say it was a tandem manure spreader, we would measure from our hitch pin back to in between the two sets of tandem wheels. If this was a disc, we would measure from the hitch pin back to the center of the disc. Between the front discs and the rear discs, we measure the center, just like it shows here on this image. This value over here is when your coverage map turns on and off on the screen. We need to measure that from our hitch pin to whatever is ground engaging. So if it was a pull type sprayer, this measurement is from the hitch pin to the spray bar. If it's a fertilizer spreader, it's from the hitch pin back to where the fertilizer hits the ground as it's being thrown out of the machine. Lastly, we have our center distance here again where this is 50% of the working width. If this implement was offset one way or the other, we can change this particular value to swing that implement to the side. You'll notice in the bottom left corner we have a small image of the tractor with our fertilizer bar with section control enabled. That's why we have all these white boxes. You'll notice as I change the values in our implement setup, that bar will change. So currently it's so far away from the tractor. You see that in the picture. Now if I tap on that and I change it, the system defaults it to zero. So if I change that to zero, you'll see that spray bar or that application bar moves right up behind the tractor. And in a real world situation, that is not accurate. So if you would like the system to be accurate, to turn your sections on and off automatically for you, you have to adjust this value. We'll go ahead and set that back to 30 feet. And our navigation point in this case, we'll do the same. We'll set that to 30 feet for this fertilizer spreader. Now we hit our check mark and our unit would be ready to use.